Hey, welcome back to another issue of Fits Fun Fitness. Today we are going to talk about, well, let's just put it this way. A lot of times you're going to probably notice by now or you might hear me say in the future. I like to liken exercise to operating a car. And stay, bear with me, here's where it comes. Think about it, different areas of our life. When we were younger, like let's say 16 through 20, the most important thing about having a car was you wanted power, you wanted sleek lines, classic curves, built for speed. Think about your body at that time. Same thing. You wanted, guys wanted power, guys and girls both wanted sleek lines, classic curves, and everything in life was speed. You had to be fast, move around, things like that. Flash forward to my current age, 50s, or I'm 51, okay? A little different thought process. My liking with cars right now is, hmm, I've got two kids a couple years away from college. I wonder how I can make my minivan last five or six more years so I can save up for college. And I wonder if I can, you know, maybe rebuild the engine or, uh, you know, if maybe get some new tires. You know, how can I keep it going? How can I make it last a little longer? Uh, same thing with our bodies at this point. Uh, luckily, I'm not there yet, but I have friends who are like, uh, had a hip replacement. They've had a knee replacement. Uh, you know, with the arthritis, like I said, I'm exercising every day just to keep functional. It's for me, I liken my daily exercise to WD-40. It gets my body moving. So these are the kind of things that, you know, cross our minds now. It's how do I keep functioning when I get like over 40 or when I have an autoimmune disease or, you know, it's a form of arthritis. Well, you know, if we're lucky, some of us have gone to head massages. They're wonderful, but they're a little pricey. And also, you know, with a busy life, you don't always have time to do them. But some of the things that we can do at home, and you might have seen these before, you probably didn't know much about it. I'm just going to show you some, t you know, a little about it, but I'm not going to try, like I said, to reinvent the wheel. There's tons of videos out there on YouTube already. So I'm going to show you some basics, and you can go look them up later. But the first thing that everyone talks about lately, you might see, is the foam roller. Okay? Uh, amazing. I wish I had invented it. thing weighs about less than a pound, and it's a big piece of styrofoam. But actually, it seems like it, but it's more so, it's called closed cell. And I don't know if it's polystyrene or something like that, but it's closed cell, meaning it uh, will not compress. So this is a hard, firm surface. There are some open cell uh, rollers you can get out there, but what you'll find uh, eventually they became fits shaped. As I roll, rolled on them after a while, they started to indent and they're like curved and they've got kind of like an hourglass figure. So they didn't last as long. So if you want to sp spend the money, uh, the closed cell ones, I think I picked this up on Amazon for about $25, $26. Uh, I like the longer one. I think this is 30 or 36 inches. I like something that's at least as wide as my body so I can do all the different exercises. They come as small as 12 or you know 18, but you know, see what you like. But what these do is basically when someone is working on you with a massage, it feels wonderful when they just dig in. And a lot of the things that cause problems in us as we get older is you hear the old term, they say, oh, you got knots. Now they'll sit there and say it's trigger points. It's basically areas of the body, different parts of the muscles where it might be tightened up in, uh, you know, contracture. It's like tightened up and you basically want to release those knots, they say, or release those trigger points. And the tricky part is uh, you'll find out that a lot of things are, there's something called referred pain. So even though you're feeling pain in your toe, the problem could actually be in your lower back. Uh, my dad has been talking about years sciatic and you hear other people talk about sciatic. The sciatic nerve is huge. It's probably, I think when I was working on cadavers, it starts around uh, the lower back. Through the lower back, it's about the size of your thumb. And it comes down through your butt, uh, down your hamstring, behind your knee, down your calf, and all the way to your toes. I think it's the big toe. And there's times where if you have a pinch in your spinal column, or I mean in the, uh, the vertebrae, a pinch there will cause a referred pain. So you feel pain in your toes, but you find out that it's actually because of the back. So what a lot of people do is they want to go down and they will actually try to massage the area and relax their sciatic nerve. Because it might be that the sciatic is getting uh, pinched somewhere. It could be either pinched by the vertebrae, or it could be that one of those trigger points or a knot in your muscle is actually contracted around it and it's putting pressure on it. So what a foam roller is, it's the way to kind of on your own do a massage. Because when you think about it, if you take two balls and you put them together, they only meet at this point right here. So there's a lot of pressure at that point where they meet. Well, the same thing here. The rounded part of the foam roller is going to push in really intensely 
on certain areas and hopefully over that trigger point. So what I'm going to do is like, let's say that I have sciatic problem. I am going to get up and I am going to start on my hip, put my weight down on the roller, and I am going to roll all along the length of my hip. And this is also called the IT band here. So I'm going to roll down my IT band and I am just going to move back and forth. If I get an area that's actually kind of a, a hot spot, I call it, or an area that triggers, I am going to massage it gently. If it's too intense, you can actually just pick up some of your weight, put it on your shoulder arm, or your elbow and relax. Move back and forth a little. You can do it on your IT band. A lot of runners have issues there. I had that when I was doing my ultra marathons. You can do your glutes. So your, the glutes are really tight area. A lot of times people get trigger points there. A lot of people will do their thighs. So again, you might want to just do one leg at a time. So you just roll the thigh. Another area we feel it is the calf. So again, there's lots of videos out there. Just type in foam roller, calf, foam roller. I've done it on my shoulder. I've done it uh, along my back, up and down the spine. But it's a great exercise. And, uh, or not exercise, it's a great way to uh, get ready to do exercise. Basically, you know, you recover from it. You can actually try to work the muscles out afterwards or some tight areas. If you're into, if it's not enough for you and you get into where you need more deep tissue massage or something to work on, you can get something like this. This is solid plastic, the little bumps in there. When you lie back on there and put your weight, oh my gosh, it's trigger point happy. You just feel all the pressure. Now, when I was talking about the balls pressing together, you're talking about now those little nubs are pressing against. They're, or they're pushing against the muscle and my scapula, they're pushing against the muscle and the different other bones under it. So this is a wonderful addition that I like to use, but you really have to work up to it. You have to have a pretty good pain threshold. There are also things like these rollers. It almost looks like a rolling pin that you might have used in the kitchen growing up. This, you can actually control the amount of effort you put on a muscle, roll your thighs out. If you have someone in your family that you trust, you can ask them to roll your back or roll your glute, roll your calf. And then some other things. This is what I call a porcupine ball. I've used this a lot of times it feels wonderful, especially with my arthritis and my carpal tunnel or starting to act up carpal tunnel. It feels great pressing on the palm. It feels fantastic on the bottom of the foot. If you have any plantar fasciitis or any foot issues, you can actually just put your weight and roll it out. Uh, if you don't have one of these, you can also get a golf ball works well for this. And anyone who is possibly a softball parent has seen one of these, the softballs from the batting cages or something. Same thing, it's a hard compressed ball. It can also work into the trigger points. Uh, these, get, these here, you can pick up pretty much Dick's Sporting Goods anywhere. Uh, Amazon, one of my favorite places for finding all these kind of gadgets seems to be TJ Maxx and Marshalls. I seem to find them there all the time. Uh, they're usually over with the yoga equipment or fitness equipment. Uh, I wanna say this was about six or seven bucks. This was something like $7. Uh, I have gotten foam rollers before. Uh, they've got wonderful different gadgets, so it might be somewhere to look. But like I said, I just wanted to give you a little tips on stuff. Uh, there's, I don't want to reinvent the wheel. There's tons of stuff out there. Look on YouTube, type in, uh, you know, it might be acupressure, it might be uh, foam rollers, but hopefully it gives you somewhere to start. Hopefully it will help you relieve some of the only issues in your body, and hopefully it will feel a little better and ready to work out and have fun. Okay, so until next time, take care. I'm Fitz.